Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of Species. If they build it, you will come. We're gonna be talking full spoilers of this one. It's ultra sexy. So I recommend if you wanna see all the spicy scenes to go and watch it first, cause I can't show many of them. Let's see if we can get a better look at her. She looks nice. This movie's about a research facility that has contacted extraterrestrial life. They sent them some DNA. So they said, hey, let's split it with human DNA and make a child in this little uh, biodome. And she grew really, really fast. And she continues to grow fast. She goes from like child to adult in like 10 minutes. She breaks out of the lab and she realizes once she's an adult that she wants a baby and she wants to like procreate. I guess maybe to like, so aliens can inhabit Earth. And now the research team joined by the badass Michael Madsen, the empath Forrest Whitaker, the regular Dr. Dana Scully, Otto Octavius, and their leader, Professor Xavier. He's actually a professor and his name is actually Xavier. And he looks like Professor Hex, but he's played by Ben Kingsley, the <laughs> Mandarin. He looks like Kingpin in the opening shot. And now they just need to go find her and stop her from killing dudes and having babies. We did a full commentary. If you're interested in that, link is in the description to the Patreon and the pinned comment. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, what do we like? I like our alien suit. It kind of looked like Green Goblin and it had features that must be noted early on. Her nipples were deadly. They extended out and could kill people. Yeah, not just a few inches, like basically liquors from Resident Evil, tongues lashing, but out of nipples. The deadliest tits in the game. She's really cool and she's really strong too because she can do whatever she wants as fast as she wants and then turn back into a babe at any moment. She can regenerate. Yeah, she, she cuts off her thumb and you're just like, oh my God. And, but we, we see her full strength when she punches that woman in half in like the bathroom stall. Christ, that was one of the scenes that I like almost remembered mixed with the cooler scene where she's like kissing a guy and her tongue blows out the back of his head. And that was just cool. So she was Michelle Williams, which is crazy. Dawson's Creek, anyone? As a kid, and Natasha Henstrich is like the adult version. And after snacking on some pudding cups, she was just like a naked babe. She was naked a lot in this film. Yeah, she was. And it's a very high point of this movie and probably one of the reasons why we even remembered it. So 11 year old us was digging this for all the boobs and some of the kills. And 38 year old us still loves it. Same, yeah. exact same stuff. The only thing that's changed is like, I didn't watch much sci-fi after that. Probably because none could compare. I gotta say, I love the fashion sense in this movie. One of her first outfits is, I'm just gonna buy like a $60 wedding dress. Very cheap. Inflation is really killing the wedding game right now. But then she switches into Barbie mode and she's got this bright fluorescent pink shirt, black pants, and a fanny pack. And that is just a look that I love. And I like Forrest Whitaker's little knit cap. I liked Michael Madsen in like a so bad it's good way for this film. Yeah. Cause like that's what's fun about his, all of his roles basically, is just how he plays the cool guy and like comes in holding his gun weird or jumping on the hood of a car thinking he's Spider-Man. It's hilarious. Why'd he do that? I, he didn't need to jump on a car. Loosely holding a gun in his hand. He like squatted down low. Like he's a really awkward guy. In this film, everyone seemed to like want him. I've been awkward my whole life. I think I just need the jet black hair at this point. And to be able to jump on a car? I could jump on a car. <laughs> Can I? That's it. I actually don't know. I used to be able to jump very high, but I put on like 40 pounds since I could jump high. Cause like you gotta figure your takeoff and then getting central on the hood. Oh, on a, off a curb though. I could probably do it off a curb. With a running start. And enough like willingness to impress ladies around me. Because like, it seemed like he just wanted to impress that, that one lady, yeah. re research girl. <laughs> I don't know her name. I don't think they even mention it. So I'm just gonna call her Scully. Laura Baker. Hi, molecular biologist, hi. This is a movie that kind of starts off really fast. There's a lot of action right up front. I mean, even the little girl smashes this dude in the train, breaks him in half, and it's just like, holy Christ, what's happening? And just everything's go, go, go. 
as our like squad is jumping and just like slightly behind Syl, which is the name of our alien girl. But there's all these relationship angles going on where Otto is like, I want to get with Scully, but Michael Madsen's trying to get with her. Cause she wants to get with him. And then Syl wants to get with Michael Madsen cause the cool effect. It's just, there's so much going on. And like, she tries really hard. She gets smoked by a car, flies through like a bus stop. And this one guy just like takes her to the hospital, tries to be like a really good guy. And she just like makes the move on him right away in the hot tub. She's like, we're banging. We're doing this right now. I want a baby. And he's like, hey, hey, that's a little fast. And she's like, nope, baby. I want a baby. What? Excuse me? Because he says no, he also dies. Which is unfortunate because like that was the one. And even the secretary said, guys like you are hard to find. He was a catch. She needed to pump the brakes just a little bit. The overall pacing of this film really did feel like it was flying by. Story-wise, this all takes place in like three days. She goes from being born to a child, to a woman, to pregnant and having like a 10 year old in a cave. The coolest cave ever under a hotel. I'm actually starting to question like, what's in our sewer systems? Are there caves underneath us right now? Fraggles. That would be awkward and cool and I wish I knew about it sooner because I'd be down there with them. But Tim Curry has scared me away from sewers for my entire lifetime. So she ends up having sex with Otto. Didn't see it coming. She did and she's like, right in me. What about protection? 12 seconds later. It started. What started? life. And like Otto's like, no, that's not possible. She's like, here, feel. Imagine that. That would be the most terrifying moment of all time. That's she's literally still riding him when this happens. And this is when she's like full mother mode and turns into this beast and busts through the wall. Yeah, they go to the cave. She gives birth to a baby boy who eats rats with a super long tongue. <laughs> and our squadron is just armed with flamethrowers out of nowhere, just scorching the joint up. It's kind of crazy, but they do eventually kill the kid and the species woman, but not before one of the rats is infected. So I can't wait to see the sequel. So the rat ate the nipple tentacle and that's how it infused itself? Yeah, but it's like that rat gonna turn into a hot babe that's not a rat? Or is it gonna be like a Howard the Duck babe, but rats, rat version? She had duck yeah. titties. We're gonna see like rat titties in the next one? Maybe. Well, Natasha yeah. Hendrich is still in the next two movies. Yeah. Cause there's like four, at least. She, she could regrow her head back. Yeah, I assume when she cut off her thumb, some of her DNA still exists on the planet. I'm sure she could just like spread out a whole new body. But what didn't we like? I wanna start. Forrest Whitaker, the empath. The weirdest guy on the planet. Right now, I don't think she's gonna wanna come here with all these cars lined up out front. He's got the most useless job. He feels things. Not like a psychic though. He doesn't have any like higher power. It's just bullshit and he can read body language and he knows how people feel. We interrupted her. Yes, I think we did. Give me something I can use. But his comments are almost completely useless because literally everybody can tell if somebody's angry or sad or mad. It would be safer to keep her in isolation. She didn't like being locked up like that. And he just like, will just say the most dumb shit. Her eyes in front so she can just a distance to her prey. But they're sitting at the, the bar at the end of the night and Scully's going back to the room and she says goodbye and he just goes to like Michael Madsen. She's going to bed. She's still... Wants to see you though. It's like, yeah, of course she does. She just said like, I want you on the dance floor. He just makes like the most dumb comments. They like each other. And everyone feels like, oh, he must know. It's like literally just look at anybody and you can tell if they're upset except women. But I also didn't like our hero squad. Like I thought they were just so stupid, especially Xavier. He's a leader of the pack. He's like the Leonardo. That guy doesn't know a thing about anything. Even though he's the one running this whole laboratory, it takes all these other people to come in and be like, oh, why did you cross it with a human? Why didn't you just try and grow an alien with the information that the aliens specifically provided you with? Oh, never thought of that. Couldn't we try growing this creature with just its own DNA? Right, you're right, you're right. Then at least we'd know what we're dealing with. We had like so many samples and we decided to just only grow one being. Two were stored in liquid nitrogen and we allowed one to grow. Literally everybody else comes up with solutions to problems that he 
and his team just have never thought about, and he's completely baffled every time. Like, I just don't know how he even has a job. And like, it was really frustrating when they did make a new alien with strictly the alien DNA. We have Michael Madsen and Scully in the room as like, things are going down. He's like, oh, I gotta blow the room up because it doesn't look good. Well, I had to keep them locked in here because it's protocol. And you're like, well, no, they're in their hazmat suits. They can walk out the door and then you can incinerate it. And he made such a big deal about it. And it was like the biggest waste of two minutes I've ever seen in my life. I get the bolt out from under the grate. Can't get to it. The floor's welded down. Yeah, this reminded me of like an asylum movie here. It was like, panic, panic, panic. <laughs> like the solution is right there, dummy. Like just let them out and then burn the guy. Ugh, I, I couldn't stand him. Otto didn't really have any personality. Like everybody else had a thing. He was just there as comic relief maybe? I don't know. He was the guy who was going to bang the girl. That's what it was about. Otto was the fall guy. Yeah, I guess so. Like that's the only purpose, but he added nothing to like any conversation. He did get Forrest Whitaker drunk. One Long Island iced tea. I like these, cup, these cups of tea. Like I kind of mentioned in the beginning, our alien suit or when Syl was in her alien skin, <laughs> the CG effects, not the best. Definitely didn't age well. That's just what happens because CG wasn't as sophisticated as it is now, but it is noticeable and <laughs> hilarious. And it reminded me of this PSA that we had as a kid in Canada of this little robot guy jumping all over the place. Same exact CG, I think. I can put my arm back on. You can't. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. This was a fun revisit because I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I watched it several dozen times, I'm sure. And Natasha Hendrich was still the babe that I remembered. She's cool, she's quick, and she learns from her environment, which was neat. And she kills guys in unique ways with like the tongue, with the, just breaking people's backs. Like there's a lot of cool moments, but I really didn't like the group of people trying to hunt her down because they seemed so incompetent. Even though they were hot on her trails, they were just dumb as hell every time they showed up to a crime scene. It just seemed so awkward. There's lots of nudity, lots of blood, and lots of weird alien stuff with flamethrowers. So it is worth watching, but it's not the best. So I'm gonna give this three eating bananas the hard way out of five. Having only ever watched this movie strictly for the nudity, I think this is the first time I've actually seen it and understood what the story was about. The story is kind of hilarious when you think about it. It's about an alien just wanting to have a baby. I liked it. It was a fun time. It moved really fast and a lot was happening. There was cool gore. However, our characters were something else. I think knowing where our actors went on to be made this more of a nostalgia pop to see them in these roles but the characters themselves were not that good it was cool for its time and it did hold up almost 30 years later so with that being said i'm gonna give this film three and a half sexy nightmares out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, watch along with us with our Patreon commentary. Linked in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything here on Bloodbath and beyond.